Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to my channel. Please don't forget to subscribe and let's reach 1,000 subscribers so that I will post videos regularly. Also, use the Super Ninjutsu power to like this video. Finally, don't forget to write in the comments which anime you want me to cut and turn on the bleach bell to get notifications and be informed when a new video will be uploaded. Let's go! The anime begins with our main character, Hanagaki Takemichi, lying around and watching the news. Then he watches on TV that the conflict in Tokyo Manji Gang led to the death of some civilians, including siblings Naoto and Hinata Tachibana. Takemichi realizes that Hinata was his only girlfriend in the middle school. Next, the neighbor complains that his TV is too loud and the manager also complains because he doesn't work properly. Standing at the train station, Takemichi understands that he is a real loser in this life. Suddenly, someone pushes him onto the tracks and the train hits him while he was thinking about Hinata in his second year of middle school. Unexpectedly, Takemichi awakens on the train and sees his old school friends Makoto Suzuki, Kazushi Yamagishi, Atsushi Sendor, or simply Kun, and Takuya Yamamoto. Next, Takemichi looks at the mirror, checks his phone and he sees it's July 4th, 2005. They all come to eat some fast food and they come and they are happy that Takemichi's cousin Masaru is the leader of the Shibuya 3rd middle school and with his help they will fight with the second years of that school. They reach Shibuya and Takemichi gets scared as he hasn't fought in 10 years. Unexpectedly, some third years led by Masataka Kiyomizu appear and one of them orders Masaru to go and buy them drinks with his own money. Then, Takemichi recalls that Masaru was actually their errand boy, so they get beaten up and informed they will be now soldiers in the Tokyo Manji gang. Takemichi also recalls how their hellish day started and this was the reason he left the town after graduation. In the evening, he visits Hinata and suddenly starts crying. He then leaves and sees how three guys bully a young boy. Takemichi goes and punches one of them and they all leave while apologizing. Next, the boy says his name is Naoda Tachibana, and Takemichi reveals that on the same day in 2017, he fell into the train tracks and ended up 20 years in the past. Finally, he discloses that on July 1st, 2017, Hinata and Naoda will die, so the boy must remember the date and protect his sister. After shaking Naoda's hand, Takemichi wakes up in the hospital and sees it's July 4th, 2017. Suddenly, Naoda arrives and informs him that Takemichi had time traveled. Naoda became a police officer but couldn't save Hinata. That's why he asks Takemichi to save his sister. In Naoto's office, he explains that Takemichi's power is time traveling and he is able to jump on the exact same day but only 12 years ago. During two days, Naoto gives Takemichi all the information about Tokyo Manji Gang and wants him to remember it. On the 1st of July, a huge strike ran over Hinata and she died. Naoto also reveals that some of the information he is giving him is not known to the media because the previous detective sacrificed his life for this information. Well, Naoto states that Tsukimichi can only time travel 12 years ago, so he orders him to meet the Tokyo Manji Gang's top two members, Manjaro Sano and Tatakisaki. When they both met each other, they created Tokyo Manji Gang. Next, Takemichi and Naoto shake hands and Takemichi goes back to 2007. Suddenly, he realizes that he is fighting right now and then his opponent punches and knocks him out. After a while, he wakes up surrounded by Masataka Kiyomizu's gang. Masataka tells his men to teach Takemichi a lesson they start to beat him up. Next, the gang is leaving and Takemichi asks about the Tokyo Manji gang because he would like to meet Manjiro Kisaki. Suddenly, Masataki gets angry and starts personally to beat him up. 
In the evening, he warns Tsukimichi that if he mentions Manjaro's name again, he will kill him and Tsukimichi gets depressed. He comes to meet Naoto because he wants back to present, but unexpectedly, Hinata arrives and states that if she was a boy, she would have fought and protected Tsukimichi. Tsukimichi thinks he isn't obligated to save her, but seeing Hinata now, he can't let her die. The next morning, Takimichi and his friends gather in the school's bathroom and Ikan reveals that Takuya will fight today. Takimichi recalls that he almost died in that fight and Akun wants to take Takuya's place but Masataka wouldn't let him do it. They all care about each other and Takimichi is happy about that. Later, the fight between Kojima from Sakura Middle School and Takuya from Mizu Middle School is about to begin. But Takimichi stops their battle. He offers a king versus a slave battle and instantly challenges Masataka. Well, the fight starts and Masataka immediately hits him several times, so Takimichi cannot do anything. At this time, his friends offer him to surrender, while Akun prepares to use his knife. Takimichi continues to fight and nobody believes it. He reveals that he was running all the time, but now he has a reason and can give up. Unexpectedly, Masataki is going to take his bed, but then, a wise leader of Tokyo Manchi gang, Dragon Ken Ryuguji, appears along with the commander of Tokyo Manchi gang, Mikey Manjaro Sano. Everyone bows down and greets Mikey, and then, Masataka personally greets him, but Draken kicks him in the guts. Mikey reaches Tsukimichi and says that starting today, he is his friend. Then Mikey approaches Masataka, kicks him in the face and then proceeds to beat him up. In the evening, Kazushi and Mikoto are excited that Tsukimichi manages to make friends with Mikey, whereas Akun reveals that he planned on stopping Masataka, but now they are no longer his slaves. The next morning, Tsukimichi and Hinata go to school together and then they decide to go on a date today. Suddenly, Mikey and Draken come to his classroom and ask him to come out and play. Later, Mikey wants Tsukimichi to hang out with them, but Tsukimichi states he's busy. Unexpectedly, Hinata approaches them and slaps Mikey. She then takes Tsukimichi's hand and tries to leave, but Draken stops them. Another tells that if they are the reason he's beaten up lately, she will stop it. Hearing this, Tsukimichi orders Draken to release Hinata. At this time, Mike asks him how he wants to die and is going to punch him but suddenly stops his hand and states he's joking. While leaving, Mikey and Draken state that they are glad to see how Tsukimichi protects his girlfriend. In the schoolyard, Hinata apologizes to Mikey and states that he can go with his friends. While riding bikes, Mikey tells that he had a 10 years older brother who picked fighting with much stronger people and Tsukimichi reminded him of him. Mikey intends to make a new era for delinquents and wants Tsukimichi to come with him. Next, Tsukimichi goes home and thinks that Mikey is not the guy that would kill someone like Hinata and suddenly passes a group of guys and feels he had seen one of them before. On the train, he invites Tsukimichi to her place. After a while, they both come to her room and she thanks him for saving Naoto from bullies. After that situation, her brother wants to become a police officer like their dad. Hina states that Tsukimichi feels more mature and wishes to know more about him. At this time, fireworks start and they both go to the roof to enjoy the view. He then holds her hand and suddenly realizes he's holding Naoto's hand and returns to the present. While in the present, Tsukimichi wakes up, whereas Naoto realizes his theory about handshaking is correct. He also states that if he spends a week in the past, so when he returns to the present, the week will be past as well, and during that time his body in a suspended animation. Next, Tsukimichi reveals him at Mikey and suggests meeting him in present. Naoto agrees and then he finds information about Akun. At the age of 16, Akun got arrested for stopping Masataka, and after his release he was just a no-name punk. 
Then they both realize that the past has changed and Tsukimichi decides to call him so he may arrange a meeting with Mikey. Next, Tsukimichi finds Sakun's phone number and instantly calls him. Later, they come to visit Sakun at the hostess bar. They enter the building and wait for him. Suddenly, Akun calls Tsukimichi and sits behind them. Tsukimichi cannot recognize his old friend and then Akun wishes to speak to him in private and they head to the rooftop. There, they talk about the past and Akun knows that Tsukimichi came with Hinata's little brother cop. He also reveals that he was the one that pushed them into the train tracks, but unexpectedly, Naruto saved them. Tsukimichi refuses to believe this as he is his friend, and then Akun reveals that he is Kisaki's soldier, and everyone in Taman obeys him as they haven't seen Mikey in years. He also adds that Mikey changed after Draken died, and then he asks Tsukimichi to go back in the past and save him. Save everyone! Suddenly, Akun jumps from the rooftop and dies. Unexpectedly, on the other end of the rooftop, Kisaki was listening to all their conversation. Later, Tsukimichi tells Naoto to look into the day Draken died and tells him that the only one who turned Taman into Avil is Kisaki. Next, Tsukimichi goes to work, but his manager informs him that he is fired. In the evening, Tsukimichi wonders if he should tell Pasinata about the future, but Naoto tells that Hina may find him crazy and dislike him. Then Naoto reads the news reports on Draken's death. On the 3rd of August, 2005, he and other 50 people were in the biker gang fight, and he ended up being stabbed and died. The reason for that fight was inner strife between Mikey and Draken's factions. Tsukimichi finds that hard to believe and then Naruto informs him that his current mission is to save Draken. In the past, Tsukimichi opens his eyes and sees a half-naked girl on him. So when she answers a phone call, he instantly runs away. Unexpectedly, Hina appears behind him and states that he has been called to her since fireworks day. At this time, Draken calls him and tells Sukun to the Musashi shrine as they are gathering there and Hinata decides to go with him. After a while, they come to the shrine and see numerous people with bikes. While Takashi Mitsu, the second division captain, realizes this is Takimichi and orders Pachin to release the guest. Takashi brings them to the leader and then Draken introduces Emma. Suddenly, Emma calls him a wussy boy and states he made her get in her underwear and then ran away. Hina gets angry and beats up Takimichi. Then Emma reveals she just hope Draken will pay attention, but he only cares about the gang. The month's meeting begins and Mikey wants to know the gang's opinion on the conflict with Mobius. At this time, Takashi explains that Mobius leader Nobutaka Sanai messed with Pachin's body for something stupid. Nobutaka beat up his body and raped his girlfriend in front of him, then took his money and hung his parents and siblings. Then Mikey asks Pachin's opinion, and Pachin offers to fight them. Next, Mikey announces that they are going to crush Mobius on August 3rd at the Musashi Festival. In the morning, Tsukimichi decides to be Draken's bodyguard, but he refuses. Next, Tsukimichi is going to follow him. Draken brings Mikey to the hospital to see Paz's body's girlfriend, but then her father yells at them and Mikey gets angry. Suddenly, this man starts to cry and Draken calms Mikey down. At this time, Tsukimichi realizes why Mikey had changed after Draken's death, but is sure that those two would never fight. While well, Draken is born in the Shibuya Red Light District and lives in a brothel, every day he meets other night fairies and goes to school. In 5th grade, he got his first head tattoo and then won a lot of fights because he was taller than most of his mates. One day, Sumiyama crew members have bitten Draken and then Sumiyama personally ordered him to bring Mikey from 7th middle school. Draken is very excited to meet and fight Mikey. Finally, he finds him, but Mikey is not what he expected as he is much smaller than him. 
Then, Mikey approaches him and Dragon informs him that some middle scholars wanted to see him, and Mikey agrees to go to meet them. Later, Dragon brings Mikey to them, and Mikey instantly runs and jump kicks Sumiyama, beating him and scaring the rest. After that, he wishes to be friends with Draken. At present, Takemichi asks Naoto to track Nobutaka Sanai, in order to ask him what happened with Wintaman and Mobius. Suddenly, they find a Sanai and are going to question him. In the cafe, Nobutaka refuses to talk about Toman's fight, but after a while, he reveals that they didn't kill Dragon, but the incident was a trigger that led to Toman's internal conflict, and all was planned by someone. Naoto agrees that someone used Nobutaka and wished to split Toman. Takimichi returns to the past and wakes up on a bike with a kun. Later, Tsukimichi asks him if he has a dream and then Nakun reveals that he wants to become a hairstylist. Next, Tsukimichi leaves him and comes to Mikey, who is with Draken, Pachin and Pian. Tsukimichi states that someone organizes their conflict and then Pachin starts to beat him up, but Mikey stops them and states that they will fight Mobius for sure. Suddenly, Draken wants to know more about what Takimichi is talking, and then Nobutaka Sanai personally comes. Pachin gets angry and immediately attacks him, but the Sanai knocks him with a single punch. Unexpectedly, he calls the rest of the Mobius, and then they surround him on members. Mikey then comes to Sanai, and suddenly a Sanai starts to beat up Takimichi, but Pachin stops him and wishes to fight. The battle begins, and Pachin gets a lot of damage, but he continues to fight. Unexpectedly, Pachin starts to fall, and Mikey catches him, saying that he doesn't give up. After that, Mikey approaches a Sanai and instantly knocks him out with a single kick. Suddenly, a Sanai gets up, takes a broken bottle, and rushes at Mikey, but Draken easily stops him. Seeing how strong Mikey and Draken are, the Mobius members start to fear them. Draken then announces that Mobius will be under Tokyo Manji gang. At this time, they all hear the police approaching, and suddenly, Pachin stabs Asunai in the back. Mikey yells that they need to run away, but Pachin tells them to run as he intends to turn himself in. Later, they all escape, and Sakimichi loses consciousness. The next day, Sakimichi wakes up in the hospital with Emma next to him. Emma then informs him that Taman is now divided into the Mikey's faction and the Draken's faction. Next, Tsukimichi spends three days at home and his friends visit him and tell him that Taman is in a bad situation and is likely to split. But suddenly they start to laugh and Draken shows up. He then informs that Pachin will be held for a year and Sanai is alive. He also informs that he is done with Mikey and suddenly Mikey appears next to him. They both are very angry at each other and start to argue. Tsukimichi tries to stop them, but then Mikey throws Tsukimichi's bike at Draken and Draken also breaks Tsukimichi's bed. As they break everything and prepare to fight, Tsukimichi gets angry and tells them to stop. Tsukimichi tries to punch Mikey, but he falls into the trash. Then he comes down and starts to cry. Tsukimichi explains that they don't care about those around them and their fight will split them on. And then a funny situation with the poop on Tsukimichi's head makes them friends again. Later, Tsukimichi explains that Mikey still wanted to help Pachin while Draken wanted to honor his result. He then understands that he has changed history again and Draken will not die. At this time, Hina and Emma come to him, and Hina invites Sakimichi to go to the festival together, and he gladly agrees. On the 3rd of August, they go to the festival with Emma and Draken, and Hina explains that Emma loves Draken a lot. Lily starts to rain, and they hide under the tree. Suddenly, she loses balance and starts to fall, but Sakimichi manages to catch her. He then attempts to kiss Hina, but his phone rings. He's annoyed at Kazushi for calling him that moment, and then he tells Sakimichi to warn Draken to watch his back, as he heard that some that support Mikey are looking for him. Next, Sakimichi leaves Hina and finds some of the Taman members with the Mobius guy, who gives Masataka a blade, and he states that he will kill Draken. 
Suddenly, one of his guys finds Sakimichi and they all start to beat him while Sakimichi realizes that he has not got stronger. Then Masataka ties Sakimichi and leaves. After a while, Hina finds him and removes the duct tape from his mouth. Sakimichi starts to cry because he cannot save anyone and suddenly, Hina kisses him, saying that he is the coolest one. After that, Sakimichi gets motivated and goes to stop Masataka. Then he meets Takashi and informs him that Draken will be attacked, however, Takashi already knows about it. Takashi reveals that Mikey wanted to pay to feed Pachin, but Draken was against it, and then he thanks Takimichi for stopping Mikey and Draken's fight. At this time, Draken and Emma go home, but suddenly, Pian stops them. Takashi and Takimichi are looking for Draken, and Takashi explains that Pian teamed up with the Mobius members to take out Draken because he thinks that Taman betrayed Pachin. At that moment, Draken approaches Pian to fight him, but suddenly, one of Mobius members attack him from behind. Next, Takashi and Takimichi find Draken fighting numerous Mobius members. Suddenly, Draken gets tired, sits on the ground and asks Takashi to protect them. A moment later, Mikey personally arrives to help Draken and others, noting that someone tricked Pian in order to break Taman. At this time, Shuji Hanma appears, stating that he is a temporary leader of Mobius. Mikey instantly manages to kick him, but Shuji blocks his attack. Shuji reveals that he wants to destroy Taman and kill Mikey with his own hands. He then orders 100 Mobius members to attack them, but suddenly, all Taman gangsters come to help their men, while Tsukimichi realizes that he changed the events and a new conflict rises. Draken then gets up and the clash begins. On the battlefield, Tsukimichi tries to find Draken to save him and change the future. While beating down Mobius members, Mikey finds Pian and asks him why he attacked Draken. Pian doesn't accept that Taman gave up on Pachin and starts punching him, but Mikey just pulls Pian's head towards his own head and tells him that he feels bad knowing that Pachin was arrested. He also adds that he had never thought that Taman may end up with all of them fighting and wishes him to return to them. Unexpectedly, Tsukimichi spots Masataka and decides to stop him, but then sees he holds a bloody blade. Sakimichi then turns around and sees an injured Draken bleeding on the ground. He then comes to Draken and instantly informs Mikey about the disaster while Mikey fights Shuji. He punches Shuji a lot, but the enemy continues to stand and fight. Suddenly, Draken starts to cough up blood and Sakimichi realizes that he is still alive. Next, Mikey orders Sakimichi to take care of Draken and then Sakimichi puts an injured dragon on his back and tries to carry him to a hospital. At that moment, M and Hina come to them, informing that they have called for an ambulance. While waiting for the ambulance, Masataka and his gang approach them. Unexpectedly, Draken awakens and asks Sakimichi to take Hina and M and just run away with them. But suddenly, Takimichi gets motivated and challenges Masataka. Draken, Hina and Emma support him and Takimichi attempts to punch him, but Masataka instantly stabs him in the arm. At that moment, he pulls out a knife, attacks Masataka and bites him. Masataka starts to hit him, but Takimichi uses all his power and starts choking him and eventually he wins Masataka because he loses consciousness. Then, Masataka's gang is going to attack Tsukimichi and he orders Hina and Emma to leave. Both Dragon and Tsukimichi prepare to fight even though they have got a lot of damage. Masataka's gang run on them, but suddenly Akun comes out and punches one of them, making him drop his knife and then all of Tsukimichi's close friends also come out and are ready to protect them. Later, they'll easily get beaten up, but they don't give up. At that moment, they hear an ambulance sirens and Tsukimichi greens, thinking they have won. Hearing the sirens, Masataka's gang members just run away, whereas Tsukimichi's friends help them and then Hinata and Emma led an ambulance team to them. At this time, Taman gets the victory over Mobius and only Mikey and Shuji still fighting. Suddenly, they all start to run away as the police are coming. 
before leaving, Shoji informs Mikey that he is going to be the first vice commander of the Biker Gang Alliance while hauling the future. In the ambulance, Draken thanks Tsukimichi for saving his life and tells him to take care of Mikey. Suddenly, he gets cardiac arrest and then the medical staff immediately take him to the operating room in the hospital. Later, Mikey and the others arrive and Mikey tells them that they need to believe in Draken. As the operation ends, the doctor informs that the operation was successfully completed and Draken is alive. Before leaving the hospital, Takashi informs Pian that the one who was thinking the most about Pachin was Draken, and after that, Pian agrees to apologize to everyone. In the street, Takimichi realizes it's already August 4th, which means Draken didn't die and finds Mikey alone, crying out of relief that Draken is alive. On August 10th, Takimichi has become a legend and visits Draken but ends up being scolded for how lame he looks and acts. Then Draken gives him Taman's uniform from Mikey and bows, thanking Takimichi one more time, stating that Mikey is sleeping on the roof. Next, Takimichi meets Mikey and he wonders why Shuji wanted to cause inner conflict within Taman and how Takimichi realized all that before anyone else and tried to stop it. At that moment, Takimichi tries to tell the truth, but Mikey mocks him for his lame outfit and thanks him for saving Draken. After a while, Takimichi decides to go to the present and goes to Hinata's home to see Naoto. He also gives her a folk lover knuckle while Naoto appears and Takimichi returns back to the present. Well, in the present, he finds himself working in the video store and cannot find Naoto's phone number in his contacts, but then he gets a notification reminder for a scheduled meeting in the salon. In the evening, he comes there and meets Sukun working as a hairstylist assistant. Takimichi gets happy that he manages to change the present and then Naoto calls him informing him that they need to meet Hina. In the car, Takimichi is very excited to meet Hinata while Naoto tells him that the Taman dispute didn't occur in the current future. Later, they arrive at Hina's apartment and Naoto informs him that his sister is now an adult and an elementary school teacher. Suddenly, Takimichi gets nervous, he tells Naoto that he cannot see Hinata and that Naoto should visit her alone. He then wants to leave but bumps into a grown-up Hinata and starts crying up and seeing her. They eventually gather in her apartment and Naoto decides to leave because Hinata and Takimichi sit awkwardly. Then Takimichi notices the same necklace on her neck that he gifted her 12 years ago and Naoto decides to bring the group somewhere. There is still an awkward atmosphere in the car and suddenly Naoto is being called by the police, so he leaves his car to Hinata. After a while, Hinata stops the car and offers Takimichi to walk with her. She tells that the park evokes a memory of her with someone she liked who broke up with her on the Christmas Eve and Tsukimichi comes to the realization that Hinata is talking about him. Unexpectedly, he leaves her and rushes to the bathroom where he meets an unknown man who remarks in surprise that Tsukimichi is not in the car and that he hoped to take them both. Tsukimichi finds out that this man was Shuji and immediately rushes to Naoto's car where Hinata is sitting inside the car just in time when an unknown car drives into it. At that moment, Takimichi runs to save Hinata and sees the driver of that car, who turns out to be a gravely injured Takun. He then informs Takimichi that he is Kisaki's soldier and asks him to save everyone. Suddenly, the car explodes and Takimichi rushes to Hinata, who is still alive. He wants to save her, but sees the front of the car smash her legs. Tsukimichi hugs Hinata confessing that he has and will always love her, whereas Hinata pushes Tsukimichi away to save him and then her car explodes either. Tsukimichi then promises to save Hina and find a future where she is alive, no matter how many attempts it takes and resolves to become the top member of Taman in order to do this. At Hinata's funeral, Tsukimichi approaches her shrine and decides to pay respects towards her while Naoto starts to cry about her death. Later, Hinata's mother approaches Tsukimichi and gives him Hinata's favorite knuckle, which was a gift from him. 
Naori informed Sugimichi that Akun was married and had children in the current future. He also adds that Akun's family was used to force him into doing it, as they are currently missing. Tsukimichi then promises to do anything to save Hinata and wonders how saving Draken could lead to the current future and Naoto looks into Draken's current life. On the 20th of October 2017, Naoto brings Tsukimichi to the Tokyo Detention Center to meet Draken because he's on the death row. Draken comes to the visitation booth to talk to Tsukimichi and Naoto. Tsukimichi finds out that Draken committed murder and asks him how this happened. Draken then gets angry and says that he would make sure to kill Kisaki if he had a second chance because Kisaki ruined his life and changed the man. Suddenly, the visitation time ends and Draken orders Tsukimichi to leave Tokyo because in the past, Kisaki started to hate Mikey a lot and now he wants to take away everything Mikey holds dear. In the hallways of the prison, Draken thinks back to the murders he committed on the orders of Kisaki. In Naoto's apartment, Naoto informs that Kisaki currently holds one of the most important positions in Taman, the acting leader. But the police cannot find any leads to Kisaki. Tsukimichi then decides to become the captain of the 3rd division in Pachin's place and Naoto trusts him, shaking his hand. In the past, Tsukimichi finds himself in the bathhouse with Mikey and Draken and then both Draken and Mikey start to laugh and fight. Later, they leave the best house where Mitsuya, Yasuhiro and Nahoya are waiting outside and Mikey tells Tsukimichi that they are going to nominate a new 3rd division captain. When they all gather, Draken announces they will be choosing the new 3rd division captain today and Mikey calls for the new captain to come out. Suddenly, Kisaki walks up puffing Tsukimichi who recalls he had seen him before. Kisaki goes to Mikey and sits with his back towards him, which angers the rest of the members and then Kisaki's man introduces him as a new 3rd division captain, which shocks Takimichi. Some of the members are unhappy with it and Draken calms them down. At this time Mikey explains they will be facing Valhalla and re-announces Kisaki as the new 3rd division captain because he will help them against Valhalla. Suddenly, Takimichi punches Kisaki and all captains get angry. While wondering what to do, Keisuke Baji steps up and attacks Takimichi but is stopped by Takashi. Mikey asks Baji what is he doing there as he wasn't allowed to come to the meeting due to the certain internal conflict. Baji then states that he will be joining Valhalla and quits his position as the first division captain of Taman. At that moment, Kisaki punches Tsukimichi in the face, knocking him out. Later, Tsukimichi awakens with Mikey next to him. Mikey then explains that it's hard growing in an organization as when he brings new blood, the old one leaves. He also adds that he had a neighbor kid that always picked fighting with him, but he always beat him in childhood. Now, that guy is Baji, one of the founders of Taman as well as Draken, Takashi, Pachin and Mikey himself. They created Taman in the first year of middle school. Unexpectedly, Mikey asks Tsukimichi to bring Baji back from Valhalla, and Tsukimichi agrees, asking him to kick Kisaki out of Taman in return, and Mikey agrees as well. On the other hand, if Tsukimichi fails, Mikey will kill him. Then, Mikey states that Takemichi is joining the second division under Takashi and is now officially a member of Taman. Later, Takemichi wonders why Baji left and finds a charm on the ground with the photo inside. He finds out that this is a photo of the founding members of Taman but sees a sixth person he cannot recognize, whereas Baji meets with the person from the photo. This human being is Kazutora Hanemiya. The next day, Kazutori is going somewhere, whereas at school, Takemichi's friends approach him, commanding they heard he got into Taman and wish they will join soon as well. Takemichi explains that he needs to bring Baji back, otherwise Mikey will kill him. 
As she then explains that Taman is led by Mikey and Draken and has five divisions, each with 20 members for a total of about 100 members. So when Pachin was arrested, Pian joined the second division under Takashi, and the former leader of Mobius, Kisaki, then became a new third division captain. So when Asanai lost to Mikey, the group led by Kisaki joined Taman, making Taman grow from 100 to 150 members while the other Mobius members joined Shuji and created Valhalla, consisting of 300 members. However, Shuji is just the acting commander and no one knows who the real commander is. That's why Valhalla is also known as the Headless Angel. Kazushi also adds that the remaining anti toman members were gathered by Valhalla's number 3, Kazutora. Suddenly, Kazutora enters the classroom looking for Tsukimichi. Next, he hugs Takemichi and wishes to take him to Valhalla's hideout. But Takemichi realizes that going with Kazutora may get him into serious trouble. However, as this is a chance to meet Budgie, so he decides to go with him. On their way, Kazutora explains that most of the time he was in Yubi and that's why nobody knows about him at school. They then enter Valhalla's hideout and Takemichi sees Baji beating someone and wonders what is going on. Kazutora states it's a tested phase and now Baji is beating his first division vice captain in Taman, his most trusted retrainer. Later, Kazutora introduces a new Taman member, Takemichi and Valhalla members start sharing to kill him. At this time, Shuji asks Takemichi what Baji said at Taman's last meeting and Takemichi tells all the truth. Then Kazutora reconfirms that Baji wishes to join them because they want to kill Mikey and Baji personally agrees to help them. Baji states that Kazutora is also a founding member of Taman. In the summer of 2003, Baji and Kazutora reach the meeting place and Draken tells them to dress in new Taman jackets and take a picture. Next, he explains that after taking the picture, a serious accident occurred that no one ever expected. In 2003, all Taman members drive their bikes, but Mikey is too slow with his moped, which makes others wait for him. Then Draken and the rest complain about Mikey's moped, whereas Mikey doesn't want to change his horse. At that moment, an older biker gang arrives and one of them decides to wreck Mikey's moppet, but Mikey states that he will kill him if he scratches his moppet, which makes him get scared and then they leave. Later, they continue their ride and Mikey's moppet stops, but Mikey states that it's the man's problem and wants a rock, paper, scissors to decide who will go for gas. As a result, Budgie loses and goes to the gas station, whereas the others are relaxing on the beach. Unexpectedly, Baji meets the same biker gang from earlier and then they start to beat him. That guy wants to destroy Mikey's moppet, but Baji protects it with his body. At this time, Mikey comes to them and with a single kick destroys his own moppet. He instantly knocks out one of them and then they both face the rest. On August 13, 2003, Kazutora takes Baji with him and they are going to get Mikey a present because his birthday is coming. Kazutora brings Baji to the bike shop and shows him the CB50T bike, which they are going to steal and Mikey will not know about it. Later at night, they break into the bike shop, find the bike and get the chains. Kazutora decides to go outside and open the shutters, but suddenly the owner appears, making Baji start panicking. The owner reaches Baji and he realizes that he knows the owner as well as the owner knows him. Unexpectedly, Kazutora runs and hits the owner in the head, stating that he had no choice. Baji starts to cry and reveals that the owner's name is Shinichiro Sano and he is an elder brother of Mikey. Kazutora starts panicking because Shinichiro is not breathing and his head is bleeding. At that moment, Baji decides to call an ambulance, however, he hears police sirens and tells Kazutora they need to run. But Kazutora is in a state of shock and mumbles he did it for Mikey, so this is Mikey's fault and thus he needs to kill him. The police arrive and arrest both Kazutora and Baji. Suddenly, Mikey appears asking Baji what is going on, but Baji starts crying and apologizes to him while Kazutora still mumbles he needs to kill Mikey. 
At present, Butch adds that he avoided Yubi thanks to Kizator and he's been waiting for him to get out since that time. Then Shuji gives him a Valhalla jacket and orders Sakimichi to tell Mikey that Toman and Valhalla's fight will occur on October 31st in an abundant car lot. Late at night, Sakimichi understands that there is no way for him to bring Baji back and the next morning, a beaten up guy calls him to come and sit on the swings. This guy turns out to be Chifuyu Matsuno, 1st Division Vice Captain. He then explains that Baji beat him yesterday because he wants to expose Kisaki. Later, Sakimichi and Chifuyu go to meet with Mikey and Draken at Shinichiro's grave. Mikey tells that he had forgiven Baji, but he will never forgive Kizatora for killing his brother. Sakimichi recalls when Chifuyu requests Sakimichi's help to investigate Kisaki as well. Sakimichi then tells Mikey that he wants to become the head of Taman and Jifuyo offers Sakimichi his help to become the head of Taman. First of all, they need to find a connection between Valhalla and Kisaki, so they decide to visit Asanai. In the past, young Kisaki offered Asanai to join him, so he will help him to take over Tokyo. In the years, Asanai went from a moron who could only fight to the commander who ruled Shinjuku. Then Asanai reveals that Kisaki organized all that happened on August 3rd and also told Mikey that he can prove Pachin's innocence. Kisaki's main goal was to kill Draken and take the number 2 spot in Taman. Now Kisaki uses Shuji as a sword and Asanai states that he is afraid of what Kisaki can do and that's why he decides to not be dealing with him. In the evening, Chifuyu realizes that Kisaki is Valhalla's leader. Sakimichi then returns to the present and goes with Naoto to talk to Draken. Unexpectedly, Draken states that Valhalla's leader was Mikey. Draken also adds that on October 31st, Taman was taken out by Valhalla and the new Tokyo Manji Gang was created with Valhalla as its parent organization. This day is also known as the Bloody Halloween. On that day, Mikey killed Kazutora, so because of that, they lost. Rogan also adds that Mikey had not been arrested because Kisaki had prepared the Patsy for him and then Mikey fell into darkness. After that, Taman transformed into a joint organization with Mikey as commander and Kisaki as acting commander. Finally, Dragon informs that Kazutora killed Baji in front of Mikey. In the street, Sakimichi recalls seeing Lang Baji, Kazutori and Mikey's devastated face and wishes to save him. At Naoto's place, Sakimichi then decides to save Baji and then they shake their hands and Sakimichi returns to the past. He finds himself with Hinata and she gives him a present. Sakimichi opens it and sees the same clever medallion he gave to her. Late at night, Draken meets Kizutora and wonders why Kizutora hates Mikey that much. Kizutora states that he spent two years in a cell and is no longer the same. He then leaves, stating that they will crush Taman in the upcoming battle. Later, Draken meets Mikey, informing him about their conversation with Kizutora, and Mikey realizes that the fight is unavoidable. On October 13th, Sakimichi and Chifuyu come to Baji and Chifuyu questions him if he found anything about Kisaki. But Baji tells him to not trust anyone who isn't his friend and that tomorrow they will crush Taman. Suddenly, Sakimichi asks Baji to not die tomorrow while Baji states that he will kill Mikey tomorrow and Takimichi tells everything to Mikey. Next, all Taman members gather and suddenly Mikey announces that he will not fight Baji, but then he asks everyone to help him win tomorrow and bring Baji back. On the 31st of October 2005, a lot of people came to see Taman vs. Walhall as the winner would be one step closer to running Tokyo. There are the Haitani brothers from Roppongi that can gather over a hundred people with a single call. And also, the fat dude on the car, a lean man, runs Vienna and is strong as a beast. And Sen arrives explaining that he will be overseeing the fight and introducing himself as a member of Ikebukuro criminal black members. And Sen introduces both Taman and Walhalla members. Next, representatives Draken and Kazutora meet each other. 
distance and asks them if they will be fighting 5 on 5 with their best guys or an all out meal with everyone and Draken informs that if they win they will be taking Budgie back which makes Kazator angry and he punches the referee. At this time both gangs run at each other. The clash begins and everyone starts to fight. On the battlefield, one of Valhalla's members attacks Takimichi while Mikey just stands and watches. Suddenly, Kazutora manages to punch Mikey but Draken saves him. At that moment, Shuji comes and states that Draken will fight him whereas Kazutora will fight Mikey. That Valhalla member continues to beat up Takimichi but Takashi saves him. Then Takimichi gets scared, but Chifu gets behind him, telling him that he will be covering his back. Unexpectedly, Takimichi gets motivated and starts fighting. In another part of the battlefield, some Valhalla members surround Draken, but he easily beats them up. Takashi tells that Valhalla consists of older and bigger members, and there are twice as many as Taman. Draken again faces numerous Valhalla members, and then Sakimichi runs and yells he will crush all of them, which makes the weaker Taman guys get motivated and stand up to continue fighting. Draken also charges his battery and starts beating Valhalla members one by one. Finally, Draken faces Shuji and runs to attack him. Draken punches Shuji and sends him flying a couple of mirrors. At this time, Kizatora runs away and Mikey just follows him. Suddenly, Valhalla Captain launches a surprise attack, but Mikey manages to block it. Kizatora then introduces Chonba and Chome, and they start fighting Mikey while Draken and Shuji perform their strongest blows. Kazutora explains he lured him here as his footing won't be stable and he won't be easily launching his deadly kicks. Suddenly, Chomba and Chome manage to grab him, and Kazutora hits him in the head with the pipe. Mikey falls, but then manages to get up and asks Kazutora if he's his enemy. Kazutora recalls how he was being abused by his father, and when Mikey told him that he belongs to him, he then tells Mikey that he went to Yubi because of him and promises to kill him. Chomba and Chome then hold Mikey while Kizutora proceeds to hit him with the pipe. At that moment, Mikey gets angry, hits Chome with the back of his head and rises his leg while Chomba is still holding him and then kicks Kizutora in the head, knocking him down. Suddenly, Mikey falls to his knees and stops moving. Then a small group of Valhalla members led by one of the remaining captains decide to finish Mikey off. Ultiman captains fight their opponents and nobody can help Mikey. Takimichi then gathers all his strengths and runs to save him. While running with Valhalla members, Takimichi constantly gets hit by them, but he stands up and continues to run. The Valhalla captain Joji reaches Mikey and is about to hit him, but suddenly Kisaki appears and knocks him out. He then announces that his division will be taking care of protecting Mikey. But Takimichi recalls that he had seen Chaji with Kisaki in the past and realizes that Kisaki planned everything to get benefits in this clash. Unexpectedly, Baji comes and hits Kisaki with a pipe and promises to kill him. Hamada then pushes Baji down and Kisaki orders his men to kill him. After a while, Chifu gets in front of Baji asking him not to kill Kisaki right now, but Baji punches him and he falls down. Baji gives Chifu 10 seconds to attack him, but Chifu cannot do anything while Takimichi grabs Baji and asks Chifu to help him. However, Chifu starts to cry and states that he cannot hit Baji. Takimichi continues to hold him and suddenly Kazutora stabs Baji in the back. Takimichi instantly pushes Kazutora back and Baji thanks Takimichi for saving him. He then informs Baji that he will personally kill Kisaki, but Baji punches boss Tsukimichi and Chifu, telling them to stay away and asking Tsukimichi to take care of Mikey. He then faces the 50 members of the 3rd division alone, takes a pipe and starts attacking them. Finally, Baji knocks Hamada out and points a pipe at Kisaki. At that moment, Baji starts spitting blood and falls to his knees. Baji falls because of his injury and then Chifu comes and realizes it's the damage from Kizutora while Kisaki provokes Mikey to anger, telling him that Kizutora had brought Baji to Valhalla in order to kill him himself. 
Mikey then gets up and reveals he thought of killing Kizatora the moment he got out of UV. However, Budgie managed to convince him to not do it because Kizatora wanted to make Mikey happy. He then comes to Shuji and instantly knocks him out, telling Dragon that the clash is over. At that moment, most of the Valhalla members start to run away. Mikey approaches Kizatora and starts beating him up, while Takemichi recalls Draken's words. While being beaten, Kizatora recalls an earlier conversation with Shuji, who told him that Baji is an enemy and then Kizatora stabbed his friend. He then remembers the day he killed Mikey's brother when Baji told him that he will be with him until the end. Kizutora then starts crying and accepts his death, but suddenly an injured Baji gets up, approaches Kizutora and yells that he will not die. Unexpectedly, Baji takes out a knife and stabs himself, saying that he won't die by Kizutora's hands. He then falls down and states that Kisaki is their common enemy with Takemichi. He also adds that he tried to solve the whole problem himself, but wasn't able to. Looking at Takemichi, Baji tells that he looks like Shinichiro and that he is leaving Mikey and Taman to him. Baji then takes his last breeze and dies in Jifu's hands. Jifu starts crying and Mikey proceeds to beat Kizutora, stating that he will kill him. Suddenly, Takemichi goes between Mikey and Kizutora and asks him to stop, but Mikey punches Takemichi, who then says that Baji didn't want death. Takemichi adds that Baji killed himself because he didn't want Kazutora to feel responsible for his fate and because he wanted Mikey to forgive Kazutora. Then Mikey picks up Baji's charm, realizes that Baji had kept it all this time and recalls how they created Taman. On the 9th of June 2003, Mikey rides with Baji on his bike and they go to the gang gathering at the shrine. Then they stop at a red light as well as the rest of the gang and each claims his bike is the best. Later, Mikey wakes up and as they gather around, he asks them if they've heard about the Black Dragons. Kizutora was fighting with Black Dragons and didn't tell his friends about it. And because of that, Mikey wishes to take them on and Baji offers to form their own gang. Mikey then states he came up with the name Tokyo Manjuro Gang, and Pachin suggests buying charms to commemorate the event. Later, they go buy charms, but find out that each one costs 500 yen. So they gathered all their money, bought a charm, and gave it to Baji. On the battlefield, Mikey tells that Baji was the one that created Saman, wanting it to be a gang that protects everyone. Suddenly, they all hear the police sirens and everyone decides to leave, whereas Kizutora tells Mikey he will remain with Baji and that he will carry the burden for the rest of his life and bows down. Taman got victory, but Kizutora was arrested. Later, the conflict became known as Bloody Halloween. In two weeks, Chifu visits Baji's grave and recalls the time he was 12. Chifu was the most important guy among first years, then his followers tell him that there is a guy that was held back and is still a first year, so Chifu goes to look for him. But when he finds a young Baji, he is surprised to see him look like a nerd and later visits Baji when he is alone to ask him why he is dressed like that. Baji states he cannot be held back or he will make his mother cry and then they become friends. While going home, the Mandala gang meets Chifu and their commander is going to punish him, but Chifu headbutts him so the fight begins and there are too many for him. Suddenly, Baji arrives and knocks out their commander as well as the rest of Mandala gang members. Then Baji invites him to eat Yakisoba together. At Tokyo Juvenile Detention Center, Takemichi and Draken visit Kizutora. He tells them he is likely to get 10 years and Draken tells him not to die, knowing what Kizutora was thinking and that he won't forgive him if he takes his life to try to make amends. Draken then gives a message from Mikey that he is still a part of Taman and that he forgives him. On the 14th of November 2005, Draken wants to see Takemichi at the next gang gathering because Mikey has something important to talk to him about. Then Draken brings him to the brothel where he leaves. 
While waiting for Dragon, a girl comes out and introduces herself as Remy, thanking Tsukimichi for requesting her service. First of all, Tsukimichi takes a shower and when he opens the door, he meets Draken and Remy realizes Tsukimichi is one of Draken's friends. He then brings Tsukimichi to his room and reveals he knew it was wrong but also wanted to kill Kizutora and thanks Tsukimichi for stopping Mike as he couldn't do it. In the street, Tsukimichi sees Emma and how she runs and hugs Mikey. She also adds that she loves him. Suddenly, Hinata and Naoto show up and Hinata decides to solve this mystery. They follow Mikey and Emma everywhere and then Kazushi approaches them. A bit later, Draken appears while Hinata comes to Emma and Mikey. Draken reaches them and commands that Mikey is hanging out with his little sister on her birthday. He gives her a plush toy she wanted from the arcade and leaves. After walking Hinata home, Tsukimichi receives a call from Takashi. The next day, Pian meets Tsukimichi and they both come to the homeroom to see Takashi. Well, at this time, Tsukimichi is surprised to see that Takashi is the president of the sewing club. He wonders what will be done soon and Pian tells him it's his jacket. Takashi then explains he wanted to do it and thanks for what Tsukimichi had done for them. On August 15, 2005, at Tuman's gathering, Tsukimichi shows up with his new Tuman jacket and Draken welcomes him and starts the meeting. Suddenly, Mikey then shows up with Shuji and Chifuyu. Well, Mikey announces their win over Valhalla and lets Shuji say a few words. He then explains that Valhalla didn't have a leader for a long time and after their defeat, they will fall under Tuman and become part of it. Shuji also says that Kisaki brought the two gangs together and Takemichi starts to worry that Kisaki will again manage to take over Tuman, which can result in an even more bad future. Next, Chifu announces that Takemichi will become the first division captain and Takemichi starts to believe it's not over yet and he still can change Tuman and then accept new position. He then goes to shake Naoto's hand and returns to the present. Tsukimichi finds himself in the DVD rental shop but cannot figure out what happened to him. He then leaves the shop and an unknown person waits for him and then tells him to get into the car. After a while, they arrive at the huge building, he gets out of the car and more scary guys greet him but he feels he had seen two of them before. Finally, Takemichi realizes that an unknown guy is his close friend Kazushi and the two other guys are Makoto and Zakuya. When they reach his apartment, he meets Chifuyu, who reminds him he's Tokyo Manji Gang's top executive. Later, they come to the meeting where he recognizes Pachin, Yasuhiro, Nahoya, and Pian. He also sees new faces, Hakai, Shiba, Seishu, Inui, and Hajime Kokonoi. Suddenly, Pachin gets into an argument with Seishu, but Shuji calms them down. Shuji adds that there is a snitch among them and suddenly Kisaki arrives. He brings Takemichi and Chifu to their new room. Kisaki asks them if they hate him and recalls it was around 12 years ago when Baji died and it was all his fault. He tells them all the truth and apologizes to Chifu. They drink and then Kisaki confesses that he lied and used Kazutora to kill Baji and now he will finish what he started. Suddenly Takemichi's head starts to spin and he loses consciousness. He wakes up tied to a chair next to Chifuyu. Kisaki then kicks Chifuyu stating that he never forgot Baji's death and has been trying to get revenge all these years and wants them to confess that they're traitors. Suddenly, Kisaki takes his gun and shoots in the Takemichi's leg, wondering why he's acting all surprised. Next, Chifu tells him that in the last years, Mikey had disappeared and Draken was executed and then Kisaki kills him. As tears appear in Kisaki's eyes, he says goodbye to Takemichi, his hero, and pulls the trigger. Thank you for watching this video, I really appreciate it. Also, check my other videos such as Winland Saga Season 1 in 58 minutes, Record of Ragnarok Season 1 in 24 minutes, and Season 2 in 23 minutes.